Let's go, let's go, let's go. It's your man Mike Bowens coming to you once again live and direct. Listen, I got a powerful message for you. This message is entitled The Inner Life. The Inner Life. See, oftentimes people think that the things that they see controls the life around them. You know, the, the clothes that they wear, the car that they buy, the house that they live in, um, the people that they hang out with. But it's quite opposite. It's the things that you put inside of you. It's the things that's going on in the inside of you that changes what's going on on the outside of you. It's like this. The, the Bible says, out of the abundance of the out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Right? You can't change your outcome unless you change your income. And right there, I just lost somebody because somebody thinks that I'm talking about your money. But I'm talking about your income in terms of your knowledge, in terms of your spiritual knowledge, in terms of how the world works, in terms of how um, people who are successful, how they think. I noticed that I've been having a lot of um, headbutting or a lot of um, hard time speaking to people that don't think the same way because I'll make a suggestion and they'll get upset. And I'm like, okay, I'm not on this level anymore because anything that I say, they get upset. For example, people will come to me and say, you know, life is so hard. And I say, I'm thinking to myself, life is not really hard. It's the choices that you make that makes it hard. See, God created life so that you can have choices. He says in Deuteronomy, choose life that it may go well with you and your children's children. Or choose death, that it won't go well with you and your children's children. He gives man a choice. Every single day you're making choices. So it's what you're putting inside of yourself through wisdom, through knowledge, through reading, through listening that's going to enable you, that's going to empower you to live a prosperous life, that's going to empower you to live a happy life, that's going to empower you to not live a life and feel like it's so hard, right? When you are void of wisdom, when you are void of knowledge, life is going to be hard because you don't know how to get out of what you're in. You don't know how to change your situation. But once you understand through wisdom how to change your situation, life becomes easy. And for most people, trying to figure out how to keep their house afloat, how to pay the bills every month is their biggest problem, right? But they don't understand that by changing their income, changing what they read, changing what they watch, now they are able to formulate ideas and have concepts and proven strategies that work. For example, I remember years ago reading um, Think and Grow Rich, The Black Choice by Dennis Kimbrough. And I also wrote, read Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Now, when I read um, Think and Grow Rich, The Black Choice by Napoleon Hill, I mean by Dennis Kimbrough, excuse me, he was giving statistics. And it tells you how many books millionaires read per month. Woo! How, and then I started reading other books on um, the habits of millionaires. And it tells you how many books they read per month. And how many, and, and if you start to look at the average American, the average American after high school reads less than one book a year. So I started seeing that millionaires read three, three books a month, while the average American reads less than one book a year. So now I'm starting to see that their knowledge that they're building up is, is affecting people's lives because when you constantly continue to study and research how life works, how health works, how finance works, how marriages work, right? How uh, raising your children, children work, right? How spiritual things work. You're constantly gaining knowledge. I beat my alarm. I beat my alarm again. Ooh-wee! My passion is driving me, baby. That's a bomb going off. Boom! And so what I'm trying to say is, when you constantly educate yourself, there's no limits on your life. It says that the average American do, um, in the book, right? These books that I'm telling you about, They Can Grow Rich, The Black Choice, says that the average um, person, right? Quote, unquote, African-American person, um, male, listens to eight to 12 hours of hip hop, right? A week. And it could be a day, but I'm going to say a week. So you're not taking the time out to reframe your mind. You're listening to everything, basically everything anti-God. 
because these lyrics is telling you it's okay to have more than one woman. It's okay, you know, to make money selling drugs. And so you have a lot of people who don't understand that. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So every time you listen to these lyrics, you're like, oh, it's just a song, but it's framing your way of thinking. And so no wonder why we have a lot of people who take the risk of selling drugs instead of selling real estate. Or they take the risk of um, having multiple children with multiple women having unprotected sex as opposed to marrying one woman and settling down because you have bought into the lie that it's okay to live this way okay and so once you understand that you can reframe your whole world by the information that you take in because your inner life is what's going to control your outer life and so it's a law that cannot be broken the law says whatever you meditate on day and night is what your life shall follow. That's why in the Bible it says meditate day and night on the word and then you shall make your way prosperous and you shall have good success. See, God don't do it for you. And it frustrates me when I talk to people who go to church. Notice I didn't say Christians. Notice I didn't say um, spiritual people because they feel like God is going to do everything for them as opposed to seeing that faith without works is dead. It's how they think. They're constantly sitting down waiting. God is going to do this and God is going to do that. They don't understand that God has already done it. The way is already made. You already got your best life. It's in the, it's in the spiritual realm. But you have to formulate a plan and take action into bringing that plan those things that's in the spiritual realm into the natural realm. But if you're constantly sitting there waiting and you're watching everybody else get married, you're watching everybody else lose weight, you're watching everybody else buy their dream house, you're watching everybody else get in their dream car, you're watching everybody else open up their business, you're watching everybody else go on vacation, and you're sitting there and getting bitter and mad. A lot of people is like that. They're getting so bitter and so mad because the Bible says a dream deferred makes the heart sick. But the, 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 the amazing thing about this is that nobody controls what you allow coming to your life. You have your ear gate, you have your eye gate. And those are the two channels which information comes into. And nobody else can control that but you. You have the power to control what you watch. You have the power to control what you listen to. You have the power to control what you read. You have the power to control how much you read. I stepped it up past millionaires. And I started studying Warren Buffett. And I started studying Mark Cuban, right? Billionaires. And I learned that Mark, Mark Cuban reads three hours a day. That's a bomb going off. But I'm gonna let you do it. Boom! I learned that Warren Buffett reads five hours a day. He spends 80% of his day reading. So now you're talking about people who are average but who have above average learning habits. Now, the richer you become, spiritually, emotionally, financially, depends on what you learn and what you apply. I'm not talking about going to college and getting a degree because they're teaching you what they feel you should know. And that's okay, but I'm not knocking it. But what I'm talking about here is your inner life, you now, going to the library or going to Amazon or going on YouTube, listening to messages like this and, and purchasing books or listening to audio books on whatever it is that you want to know. What part of your life are you struggling in? Are you struggling with your health? You can get books on that to read and to educate yourself and then apply the steps. If you're struggling in your finances, you can get books on that and read and educate yourself and begin to apply the steps to change your life. See, people make excuses instead of making moves. People make excuses instead of making changes. People make excuses instead of making progress. And you gotta be the type of person who say, you know what, I'm gonna educate myself. You know what, this TV show right here is good, however, it's not gonna change my life. The people you watching on TV, they're already balling out of control. But you're gonna sit there and struggle and constantly listen to music that's what they did. They went and did their job. They went and wrote their lyrics down. They went in the studio and they put that, that music out so that you could listen to it. Now they're making money. They're making royalties every time you 
turn it on the radio, every time you turn it on your phone, every time you turn it on um, serious, right? But when do you say, you know what, there's a time for everything and I gotta be disciplined enough that I can change what's coming into me, what's coming in through my, my eyes, what's coming in through my ear gate. So, right, I can make my way prosperous like the Bible says. See, it's up to you, it's not up to God. God has already done his part. It's up to man now to meditate on the word day and night. It's up to man now to take books and educate himself and transform his brain with a greater understanding. That's why Solomon said, in all thy getting, get understanding. I could preach this all day and night, but I just want to give you a tidbit so you can take the steps and transform your entire world. This is your man, Mike Bowens. I'm signing off until next time saying, be blessed.